And hello YouTube, this is GS Man, I'm Smart, and I'm here today with another brand new video for Tutorials GS. In today's tutorial, we've been taking a look at how to make your programs run a little faster, how to allocate more RAM, and go over some of the priority settings in the Task Manager. Now, whenever you want to make a program run faster, you have to take into consideration how much RAM your system have. Your random access memory, or RAM, determines how fast programs run, depending on how many other programs you have open. If you have lots of RAM, you can have lots of program open and things will still run smoothly. If you don't have, if you don't have a lot of RAM, then things can you know, slow down a bit if you have a lot of programs open. So how are some ways you can increase the speed of your programs while you still have a lot of programs open? Now one of the first ways you can increase speed in your programs is by changing the page file size on your computer. Now the page file size is basically virtual memory. If you go ahead and head over to your control panel and you can just search control panel on your start menu, then head on over to the system and security section, head to the system section, then head to the left where it says advanced system settings. And then you can head to, and it's also worth mentioning that here is also where you can see how much RAM your computer actually has. It's also important to know how much RAM you have because the next setting will be adjusting. Uh, it does depend on how much RAM you have. So anyway, in the advanced section tab here under performance, click settings one more time, and then head on over to the advanced section and then right down here where it says total paging file size, go ahead and click change here. Now, you have, your, you have your two drives here. I have two drives. You have more drives. You obviously have more of these, but essentially you want to uncheck automatically right here, and then you can adjust the page file size for each of your drives. Now, the one you want to look at is your C drive. Your C drive is your main drive where your OS is on. And here you see how much space is available. Now, a rule of thumb, you can change your page file size by clicking custom size here, and you can type in a custom page file size. But before you do anything, a rule of thumb is to never put more than 1.5 times your RAM. So for me, I don't wanna put more than nine gigabytes. If you happen to have 10 gigabytes of RAM, then you should not put more than 15 gigabytes of virtual memory. Uh, page file size is basically virtual memory. It's a bit slower than physical RAM, but it can make a difference in increasing the speed of your programs. So you can put a new size here, but make sure that it's not more than 1.5 times your physical RAM. As you see, uh, currently I'm allocating over four gigabytes. I can actually boost this to nine gigabytes maximum, and that can actually make things run a bit faster. So that's one of the ways you can increase the speed of your programs by allocating more virtual memory. Now, another thing you can do is by closing background programs. You wanna check your task tray. Your task tray is right here. Sometimes you may have processes and programs running in your task tray here that you may not need. Even your antivirus takes up resources. Anything running in the background takes up valuable resources. A lot of times I like to turn my antivirus off or close it because that way it won't interfere. I'm not gonna need my antivirus while editing a video, for example. So you can actually speed your editing process up or you can, even, you can even speed your gaming process up if you, if you don't need the antivirus. When you're playing an offline game, when you're playing you know, some single player game, you don't even need antivirus. So you can turn your antivirus off, save some resources. If you're editing, editing a video in Premiere Pro or Movie Maker, most likely you're also not gonna need antivirus. So several programs you can turn off and on in your task tray here to save resources. Similarly, you can do that in the task manager here. You can right click time here at the bottom, click task manager, and you can close programs that you may not need or close background applications that you may not need. What you'll notice here is that memory is at 68%. As you can see, 68% of my memory is being used. So as you can see, a lot of programs here take up some memory. If I close certain programs, I have Audition open right now. If I were to close this, I'd be freeing up more memory. As you can see, it's going down. So I have more memory for my other programs to use, which makes them run a little faster. I'm also not using Word, so I can close that as well. And the more things you close, the more memory frees up, the more, more, the more memory frees up, the faster your other programs can run because they have more memory to work with. Now, another thing you can do is go to your services here and you can actually close certain services that you may not need. So if you go through this list here and you actually categorize by description, there may be some programs here that you may not even need 
or services that you may not even need, and that can save you some resources. For example, Team Viewer here. I don't have this open. I'm not using it. I don't need this process. I can go ahead and stop this process, stop the service, and it can save myself some resources. As you can see, this is now stopped. So several of these services you can turn off if you don't need them. Uh, if you don't know which ones you need or you don't need, you can always Google them. But if you're not 100% sure, then I would just leave them alone. Another cool tip is you can actually sometimes allocate a certain amount of RAM per program. Now here, I, here I'm in Adobe Premiere Pro, and a lot of times certain programs you'll see a window pop up, and you can actually allo and you can actually assign the amount of RAM you want other programs to have available to them. The lower you put this number, the more RAM. Premiere Pro is allowed to use and other programs have to deal with this amount of RAM. So if you want more RAM towards Premiere Pro, bring this number down. If you want more RAM to your other programs, then boost this number up. But that's basically a way to control your RAM allocation. Certain programs have this, other programs, other programs don't have this. So it depends on what program you're using. If they have this option available, you can definitely do that. You can definitely use this to increase program speed. And one of the last ways that you can increase your program speed is by obviously buying more RAM that supports your motherboard's capacity. If your motherboard, if your motherboard allows you to increase your RAM to 12 gigabytes and you only have six gigabytes, you can buy more RAM chips and you can increase your RAM. RAM, RAM is not very expensive to buy. It's pretty inexpensive and it's a great way to increase speeds on your programs. And lastly, I want to go over setting priorities. Now, if you head to your task manager and click details here, you'll get a list of all the programs that are running. Now, what you can actually do is set a priority for each program. See, I want my Adobe Premiere Pro to not take up so much of my CPU. If I right click it and I click set priority, you'll see that I currently have it set to normal. Now, setting priorities is only really good if you are using 100% of your CPU. So if your CPU is at 100% here, it may be a good idea, or if it's close to 100%, it may be a good idea to change some priority settings. Now, I do not recommend setting it to above normal, high, or real time, because it can mess your computer up. It can stop some other services and programs from running that need to be run. So setting priorities is really only good for lowering the priority. And it's really only good if your CPU is at 100%. If your CPU is not at 100%, changing priority will not have an effect. Because what changing the priority does, it's basically telling your CPU that, hey, I want to give a certain program more time for it to get done what it needs to get done. So if you're not 100% CPU, it's not gonna make a difference because every program is using a set amount of CPU. It's not gonna use more if it doesn't need to use more. So if Premiere Pro needs to use a set amount of CPU, then that's how much it's gonna need to use. If you set it higher priority, it's not gonna use more CPU because it doesn't need to use more CPU. So let's just say you are at 100%. Say you're at 95%, 99%, you're rendering a video, but you don't want Adobe Premiere Pro to take up all your CPU, hogging all your resources. You still wanna browse the internet, you still wanna play a game. So what you can then do is go to your details, set Adobe Premiere's Pro priority to below normal or to low. That way the CPU is able to give more time to the other programs like Google Chrome or like a game you're playing while still being able to render a video in Premiere Pro. So it allows Premiere Pro to still do what it's doing, but not take up so much of the resources and allow you to do other things more. So it's really only good for lowering priorities and speeding up the other processes and speeding up the other things that you're trying to do if one program is taking up too much of the CPU. Other than that, those setting priorities really doesn't do anything else. So just wanted to add that to the end of the video because that is something that some people may confuse. Sometimes they feel like if I set a higher priority, the program runs faster. But that's not really the case. The program doesn't really run faster. Um, so that's pretty much all I wanted to over today. Hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. Hopefully you learned something and hopefully you found it informative. If you did, go ahead and leave a like on the video. If you have any other tips and suggestions on how to make programs run faster, you can definitely leave them in the comment section down below. We're all here to learn. and It'll be great to see other tips. If you have any questions or comments, go and leave them in the comment section below as well. I'll be answering any questions you have. I'll be down there talking to you guys as usual. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go and subscribe. We have plenty of other software tutorials, tech tutorials, computer tutorials. We have tutorials on designing, editing, video editing, image editing on Photoshop, Premiere Pro, Audacity, Gimp, lots of cool stuff on the channel. If you're interested, go and subscribe. We'd love to have you on board. And if you'd like to donate a dollar to my Patreon page, anything as low as that is very helpful and very much appreciated. Click the card in the top right hand corner of the screen and we'll bring it to the page. And if you want to check out my vlogging channel, the music channel, the advice channel, 
channel or the gaming channel links in the description as well as on the end screen that's pretty much it guys hopefully you guys are having a good thanksgiving this is just me i'm smart and i'll be back sooner than you think don't go anywhere